Okay, so hi, I'm John Romine. I'm presenting with Chris Charlton on Drush and Drush Make. This is part two of our session. So this is, um, first, what should we do first? Should we do a little demo? Let's download. So this is a Drupal site that I built for SandCamp uh, back in uh, earlier this year. I think that's what it was for. And it's pretty out of date. Actually, I haven't touched it in a year. Oh, okay. Um, so we should be able to see how it's how it's doing. So what should we be running first? Oh, let's do up then. First. So Drush up. Mm -hmm. So he's had Drush installed. He's pointed himself to the folder that his Drupal files are at, his Drupal site. Drush is now going up out to the web and it's getting the index of everything that needs to be updated. So John, can you scroll up actually? Yeah, we got a pretty long list of stuff that needs updated. You see that? The site hasn't updated in over a year. So it has a ton of updates, including some security updates. John, if you had to do all those manually. Oh my gosh, that would take hours. Right? At the minimum, a half hour, right? At the bar minimum, if you were quick. Well, I would probably want to take the site down because I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to take me a while to do the updates. Yeah. So I don't want people messing while it's working. So okay. I'll take the site down, then I'd probably update core, and then I would just make sure everything didn't go wrong. Right. And then I would probably update the modules one by one. Yeah. And then there are probably going to be some dependencies nah. that I'm going to need to update too. And uh, so I think probably it's it's a whole morning. Let's all do that by hand, please. Okay, let's not. So now Drush has asked us, I found a bunch of stuff that needs to be updated. So I'm going to be moving stuff out. This is what Drush is telling us. I'm going to move stuff out, which is the old stuff. I'm going to put new stuff in. And there's going to be changes made. So do you want me to do this, yes or no? So you can do up just to even run a report and see, hey, is there anything that needs updated? Okay. John? Shall we go for it? Please. Okay. Okay. So now Drush has already had a catalog of what's old, what's new. It knows where the new stuff's at. And now we see it's actually telling us verbosely where it backed up the old module or Drupal core somewhere in another folder and that it's pushed the other one in and if it had a problem doing so or not. So you guys see the green OK on the right? That should make you smile. When it's another color, that should make you go, huh? Okay. Well, now, now the downloads me. were done, right? And that was the files. Now it's warning me about uh, my HT access and my robots files, but we don't need to touch those. The site was standard. Good. Thank you. So Josh. we'll just go ahead and continue. Okay. Are you going to talk about what to do when you don't get that comfy green? No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> This is uh, a beginner session, it, so you know. Drush actually does give a little bit of info, but also there's a um, there's an attribute. If you use uh, dash v, Drush will be more verbose, and there's even a debug mode. So just go ahead and read the uh, the available commands for Drush and learn about the debug mode. So if you do run into an error, run the same command but in debug, and Drush will actually just let you know a lot more detail than you probably ever will know about what it was doing exactly and you might be able to find the problem there. So there were a ton of module updates and along with a lot of those module updates were actual database code updates which Drush has performed for me. All of these database changes that it finished with. And this is the same exact text that would appear on the update.php report. And it looks like it finished. You think cool. it's good? Should we try the site? If you want to. This is scary. <laughs> So it's crawler. So this is what it looked like before. It was working. Had some test data. I'll reload it. Still worked. Yep. Nothing broke. And everything. So there you go. Drupal core, Drupal folder. Technically, we probably could have gone to the update report and showed everybody, you know, like what so they're used to. But what will happen if I run Drush up again? Should oh. have no updates, right? Correct. Right. So Drush shouldn't ask us if there's going to be changes needed to be made. It should just give us a report. There we go. That Boy, that is sweet. Good. Is that sweet? Pretty neat, guys. That's good. All right. So it actually it uh, actually spells out what backup folder and then date and timestamps so it. It doesn't no, zip it. It just moves it. It just moves it to the back. The, the other modules files got moved yeah. into this backup. And for directory. those that are really nitpicky about where things go and what their software does. Drush lets you control everything. So even when you back up a database or you have backup folders, you can tell it, I want it always to go here, here, here. And it'll do it for you. All right, uh, so I have some slides. Some stuff. I have some slides on Drush Make. So let's see if we can find those. Could you maybe try downloading a couple modules? Let, well, I'll go through the slides and then we'll see how much time we have left. Right. Please. Okay, so Drush Make. Um, 
So Drush lets you do all those things like download modules. And so you're right, we should have downloaded a module. So if I want to download a module, it's Drush DL and the name of module. What should we download? Anybody want one? CCK and views. Well, you saw this list. This has a ton of modules already installed. What was the module you just said? Flag? flag module. Flag module is good. So just Drush DL flag. And it downloaded it, and it had two modules, but they're not activated. No, it just downloaded only. So I think we should turn them both on. I think we need to. So you do that with Drush EN. Which is short for enable. And then you call each module by its actual module name, listed how Drush shows it. And there you go, they're on. So now you didn't have to go to the modules administration nope. page, check all the boxes of these two modules, click save, and wait for it to go. Right. Just so that we can see the stuff that all below people can. <laughs> so we see up there Drush DL flag, that was the module name. And if we had maybe five modules that we wanted to download, we would just name each one with a space. So you can have all of them downloaded in one swoop. Okay? And then he enabled it with Drush EN, which is short for the word here. enable. And then he called each module out specifically. And then we got a little message. Now, what was the warning here? One orphan action. Back up and migrate, yep. probably had a little issue. Doesn't mess with us, so everything else looks good. Cool. Okay, um, so any, any other thing you want to show here? Here, no, because I think Drush Make uh, shows okay. how Drush Download is taken to the next step. Okay, so Drush Make um, basically is a way to give a bunch of commands to Drush and have it do more complicated work for you. Um, so first thing you're going to need to do is install Drush Make. And like Chris said, it's going to put it in some hidden folder in your home directory. Um, when you download Drush Make, Drush is going to recognize that Drush Make is a plugin for Drush and automatically put it in the right place. It's not going to download it as a module into your site. Um, to use Drush Make, you create what's called a make file. So this is a basic make file. It says core equals 6.x, API equals 2, and it has one project it's going to download, projects equals Drupal. There's a question. Oh, I'm sorry, question? On the previous page. That line, Drush DL, Drush Make. Can I Drush, Drush Make? Yeah, that's what he just did. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, we could do that on the other site. Might as well. Drush DL, Drush Make 6.x 2.2. And so he actually spelled out, so he could have just put Drush underscore Make, and he would get the latest stable version. But he actually called up the exact specific version he wanted to download. And if you know that your site can only run something, this is the way that you're able to kind of, you know, control Drush in that manner. Please, okay. Drush make. Um, so downloaded with no problems, and now it's installed. So then to make the site, so what this is going to do is this is going to build a basic Drupal site with just Drupal core installed. So all I do is I run Drush make the name of the make file, which is basic.build, and the path to my document root where I want the root Drupal to be installed. I run that. Drush make will download Drupal, untarred, and install it. And you can see I ran an LS of the document root, and all the Drupal files are now um, unpacked and installed there. You can also add other modules on and tell Drush make to download and install those too. So this Drush make file, contrib.build, it has two other files, uh, modules it's going to download, views and CCK. And then the, the command line is just the same, Drush make, build file, path to root and it will download the additional modules. And you can see it got the latest version, CCK 6.x 2.9 and Views 6.x 2.12. If you need, um, oh, and there's an a example of a list. So the document root is the same as before. And Drush make put the con contributed modules that it downloaded into Sites All Modules under my Dr Drupal install. If you need a particular version of a module, maybe because it only works with certain other modules on your site, you can specify the version of the modules that you want. So in this case, instead of just saying projects equals CCK, I say projects of CCK in the little bracket. It's a little more expanded notation. And I give the version number. And then when I run Dresh Make, it will get those particular versions, even if there are newer versions that are available. And if you want the files to go in a particular subdirectory, you can specify that as well. 
So this is, uh, this is sort of an even more expanded version of the syntax where I'm giving the version number for CCK is 2.9 and the subdirectory where I want it to be installed is contrib. And then the same thing for views. And then after I do the drush make, it will put the uh, contrib folder under sites all modules and it will put the CCK and view folders inside the contrib folder. If you have a module that's at a particular URL, it's not just a standard contrib module up on the drupal.org site, maybe a module a friend of yours has built or someone's sandbox or something like that, you can give the exact URL to your module and Drush will go download and install that module for you too. So in this case, I've created a, a project for Drush Make to install for the UCI NetID module and I'm telling it that the type of thing it's installing is a module. Drush Make can install the, um, themes and I think there's libraries. one other, yeah, library. So you need to tell it what it is so it knows where to put it. And then the method for the download, the type is going to be a get and then the URL is as I've specified here in the example. And then when I run Drush Make, I, I left out some of the uh, feedback that Drush Make gives you, but you can see it's going and fetching my um, UCI NetID module and downloading that as well. Now here's my favorite part. If there's a patch that you need to apply to one of your modules, Drush Make can do that for you. So you tell Drush Make where to find the patch, which I did here. I said it's this role help 577362-6.patch file. And when I run Drush Make, it will download the modules that I've asked for. It will download the patch. It will apply the patch to the module, and I'm all set. Is there a Drush command directly to apply the patch also? You know, I don't know. Is there a Drush command? The um, question was, is there a Drush there command to apply the patch? There plugin set, but somebody just asked me that like three days ago, so I need to just inspect and see what's available. Um, usually, Drush doesn't recreate these functionalities. It wraps. Um, functionality, so it would end up uh, requiring like a div or you know something being pre-installed or anything. Like but at the worst, as I know for older versions of uh, uh, Drupal and Drush, there was a patch uh, plugin set, but that might have gone away at some point, and I just need to check. I would imagine because Drush Make builds on top of Drush, yeah. so there's got to be something there. So you were asking about how this works, so I'll just run it on the command line so you can see it run one time. Um, this is my home sites folder, and we'll make a site called Drupal Camp LA. So I'm going to run, and I have this file, this build file already, um, basic.build. And in basic.build, is it's going to install Drupal, it's going to install CCK and views, and it's going to install this patch for role help, but I don't have role help on the list. I guess I need to add that. No, I do. There it is. All right. So I just run drush make basic dot build Drupal camp LA. And so now it's downloading the modules and it applied the patch and bada bing, it's done. So if I had a list of my favorite, favorite top 100 modules that I use all the time, your top bazillion modules My from Joe Chelman's talk, okay? And if I say if I made a text file for Drush Make, I mean, I just use that on every single site that I care to use, right? That's right. You could use that and build your sites uh, all day long, just using the same recipe that you cooked up once. Questions? Mind blown? No questions. <laughs> Mind's blown, definitely. John, do you know the syntax for uh, five local file? Patch that into Brush now? Well, um, in the demo I saw, the guy that was downloading it used his local um, localhost web server that was running on his laptop to do yeah, that. Yeah, let's tell off a host. I think right. If you need it off of a file, I don't know the yeah. syntax, but yeah. I'm sure the documentation is, is there so you can do that. Questions? I spoke with back to MindRate earlier. Can I, if I create custom modules, can I use Brush to so the question was, um, we mentioned the backup and migrate modules earlier. Uh, can Drush be used to essentially um, do the same thing, which is back up a database and, in fact, send it over to another uh, server or computer, and then, in fact, 
open that database and kind of uh, get it either restored or updated. Yes, Drush does that. There's two commands that are perfect, which are sync and SQL sync. So sync will actually sync files over, and SQL sync will just do the database. And you can kind of wrap them together even. And Backup Migrate even has its own Drush plugin. So if you have Backup Migrate module already installed on a site, you can actually have Drush fire off the backup request. You can have it do even more advanced things than the interface has. But you also don't need Backup Migrate because of what's built into Drush by itself. Question? Yeah, so the question was, if you're running multi-site, how do you do those updates? Yeah, Drush figures out what site you're working on based on the current directory. So if it's a single site, then it's going to look in their defaults. If you have more than one multi-site, then CD into the sites directory that corresponds to the site you want to work on, and then you can run your, your commands from there, and it'll update that site. There is also an option flag that you can provide in the command to tell it what site, so you don't have to go inside the sites folder. Very true. Yes. Yeah. Question. Do you, do you recommend running Drush things from your sort of system level prompt? Yes. That's the new hip trend, which is because you don't need to fire off an HTTP request to run cron PHP. Um, Drush now uh, Hudson Jenkins everything can fire off Drush. Uh, you'll even hear that a lot of the top agencies. They actually don't have a generic cron task as opposed to an automated Hudson task that will do the cron itself and fire Drush cron um, on its own. And so they actually bypass and try to come through the back door in a way, if you want to think about it that way. Um, lower number of resources and they can uh, react on a success or a fail message dynamically right there. So that is literally the new whole trend of running cron and even doing deployments. Question? Yes? Um, you didn't have to type in, like, uh, uh, like to find a Drush directory. Is, is that something that if you, like a Unix thing to get a shortcut like that? Uh, in the configuration in the installation file, um, it does point out there is what's known as on Mac and Linux the path. Um, global variable that's always around mm -hmm. and you'll end up adding to the path and it's very simple it's all in the instructions so just follow it and that lets Drush be discovered everywhere uh, in, in your system yes I'm sorry louder oh you can put that file anywhere you want yeah and then when you when you run Drush make you tell it the path to the to the document root that where the site is going to be. So the make file could be anywhere in your system. It could be in your home directory. It doesn't matter where it is. It actually could be on somebody else's web server. Uh, so you can even kind of save it. Like, you know, if you have your top bajillion, you can give that file away to people, and they can actually just point to that. HTTP, you know, your website, slash my favorite modules dot make or dot build, whatever you want it to they be. You can do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, even cooler is make files are recursive. So a make file can point to another make file that points to another make file. So they can literally build on top of each other. So you could have one make file that's just your favorite themes, one make file that's just your favorite modules, and one make file that might be specific to patches or a module itself. And then you can just have literally this small chain fire off. And it, that's the new kind of fun thing with Drush Make. There was a question, a hand. Yes. Yeah, is there a way? I don't know if it, I have this part of the implementation, but it's, it's uh, I hope you tell me right now. Is there a way to incorporate Gearwatch with SSH, like you know, doing SFTP? I don't know if you can do rsync, but how SFTP? So that Drush sync command I tell you about, I yeah. just mentioned, that's actually doing rsync. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But okay. Is there a way to incorporate that to SSH? If you have you heard about that? Uh. Tech, technically, you can tunnel any com you could pipe commands. All right. So and also, uh, Drush has things called like Drush aliases that let you manage Drush from your Drush on a remote system that has Drush over there yeah, too. Because what, what I've seen in China are during 
clients is that they're moving away from FTP to SFTP to so you do SSH keys. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I thought maybe that was already. Uh, technically, Drush could even technically interface with SFTP and FTP via command line. Drush can deal with everything. It can call, call, talk with SVN, Git, uh, everything under the sun. So it is seriously the command line Swiss army tool galore, you know. Uh, but yeah, syncing files, touching something else, it does it, you know, no problem. Yeah, I would say in this session we covered, what, like 10%? If that. Of what you can do with Drush. So, if that. you know, you're going to need to hit the documentation to see the rest of the commands you can do. And the documentation is not as uh, kind of intimidating as Drupal documentation. The Drush documentation is, here's a list of commands, here's what they do. And you can say, okay, well, I want the specific options for each command, and it will let you know, okay, here's the help documentation. And it's very easy. Plus, drush.ws is the website, and it actually details all those commands and all the options. And again, you know, did the Drush download and the Drush update seem easy? Yes? Yes. Okay, all the commands are that easy, okay? It's how complex your system is that ends up making Drush usage more complex. Okay? Yeah, go. You download a bunch of modules and enable them, but you haven't used some of them. Is there a way to clean up? Um, there might be a module out there that might help, but no, I, I don't know. If well, you could sorry. disable the module from the command line from Drush. Of course. Um, and then you could remove it, but okay. you really kind of need to know what is up on your system. Yeah, that's on you. You don't, yeah. Okay, well, we're off to lunch. All right, let's go eat. Thanks, everybody, for coming.